Welcome back to the weekly news around this is the Linux edition where we talk about various things upcoming in Linux and free and open source software world kind of short news this week and um, we actually had our supporters looking around to see if they could find anything and they couldn't find much either so very interesting let's go ahead and get started though first up of course, when GNOME first launched, like GNOME 3, they're like, those legacy systems, and they're very com you know, common to call them legacy system icon trays. Yeah, the things that all of us still use on a regular basis right now because they're highly useful. Uh, GNOME apparently wants to get away from doing anything with those, and so it got rid of those. But then, of course, everyone's like, I need these things. And so all sorts of janky extensions came about for them. But now GNOME has an official extension. It's not installed by default but it is packaged with it. So if you do um, uh, on Ubuntu apt, uh, sudo apt install gnome shell extensions, you can get it. Uh, but one of the extensions allows you to enable their, they say the status icons or the legacy tray icons. Like gnome, stop trying to change the way everyone uses computers. Really, it's annoying. Stop it. Okay, stop it. You're not trendsetters. Okay. Um, but they're basically trying to get rid of that. Of course, people still use these things. Like, I'm looking at my screen right now. Of course, this is how the Linux Mint updater is. This is how OBS tells me that it's still recording. You know, I have my Matrix client on Element. A few other ones. These are useful. They're not garbage legacy icons. Like, stop pretending this way. And why don't you start just putting functionality back in your desktop? Really? So anyway, GNOME did remove that. And of course, after too many people wanted it, um, they did finally add an extension to it. It's not, uh, it's official, but it's not default. So you can go ahead and install it on various GNOME extensions if you need the legacy system tray icons back, but whatever. Anyway, uh, Manjaro is testing out immutability. So of course, immutability is... Uh, we have Silver Blue, and then we have, I think it's Vanilla Im Immutable. We have Nix OS is a big one. Ubuntu is doing its Ubuntu Core OS, so that one is moving Immutable. So there's a variety of these different Immutable systems which are running, and uh, Manjaro doesn't want to be left out. So they did this one powered by ArcDep from the Arcane Linux project. Uh, the Manjaro variant is now available for public testing. So if you are into immutable Linux distributions and you want to test out what Manjaro is doing, go ahead and do that. And that will be um, uh, available. You can grab it down here. There's more information on the forum post over on Manjaro than they have right here. And that'll give you the various pieces of information that you might need. Let's see if the form post loads. So it's out for community testing. This is where you're going to go to grab a copy of it. So 32 gigabyte storage minimum, 64 gigabyte is more recommended, UFEI boot. And you can download it from the link there. And then they walk through all the variety of different setups for running that. Uh, SysV has an update with 3.10. Uh, so one of the things, of course, there's very few distributions now that are not running systemd. SysV is one of the alternative initialization systems. And what 3.10 brings is the machine control stop function from systemd now properly shuts down a system running SysV. And so that is something, of course, they had a few other minor bug fixes as well. Uh, just to illustrate, though, that there are other initialization systems. I personally, other than systemd is a little big and bloated, I don't otherwise see a huge reason not to run it under most circumstances. I don't see it as this giant backdoor everybody suggests it is. But yes, I do understand that it does have this giant bloat factor, kind of like X itself, which makes me wonder why more people don't want to get rid of System D as we try and pair it out X in place of Wayland. But yeah, whatever that happens to be. So there is an update there. Our biggest news for the week is the well-anticipated alpha release of the Cosma desktop environment, bringing a brand new desktop environment to Linux directly out of System76, uh, specifically designed for Pop! OS. Now, tomorrow, if you're watching this live, or yesterday, if you're watching this re-recorded on the release on Sunday, we are looking at 
this in its full glory. We've installed it on a desktop environment. For the most part, it works very well. I have found a couple of little bugs, uh, which I reported up on Twitter uh, or X. I'm not sure if uh, that's the best place to put things out, but we'll see what that is, and maybe I'll test it on some real hardware and see if I get the same bug. Uh, was the one issue was dealing mostly with workspaces. So the desktop environment itself is very nice. Now, it's not my personal cup of tea because it doesn't have the desktop icons. I can't really work off the desktop. And I just don't like the GNOME feel, the layout that it has. But that being said, it is has a lot of really good, compelling things, things to it uh, with the tiling system. it's uh, It works pretty well. I did have a couple system crashes on it when I was working with uh, trying to get those workspaces to work. Uh, that's I've actually had a couple of system crashes on that. But otherwise, it was able to recover well by <laughs> rebooting the entire system. There's no bringing Cosmic back like Cinnamon. You know, Cinnamon crash, let's come back, you know. Uh, no, it, it requires a full reboot. It drops you onto the black screen of death and you're done. All right, so uh, it is alpha. So uh, just be aware of that. Hopefully, they have that fixed. But uh, have a look at the full video premiering uh, tomorrow or yesterday, if you are, um, depending on when you're watching this video. Uh, but on, what is that, Saturday the 10th at 11 a.m., we'll be doing uh, the full review of it. We'll be looking at installation and running through all the different elements of the Cosmic Desktop. So that is what we have in our Linux news. If you'd like to help support the channel, I do have a Locals page and you can have a look over there at switchtolinux.locals.com. This is a place where, uh, of course, it's a support channel. We have a poll going on there right now for the title of the science fiction collection of an anthology stories. So all the supporters on all of our networks got a chance to read those over the course of this last year. Those are going to be com being compiled to a book. You guys will be able to vote on the best book cover and the title and things like that. And I will hopefully have that out by the end of this month. So anybody can pick a up a copy of that. And then um, hopefully in September, we will restart our short story series. So you can find those and other things on the Locals community, switch to linux.locals.com. With that, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.